Hi, and welcome to the show. Subscribe at kevinmd.com slash podcast and get CME for this episode by clicking on the CME link in the show notes. Today, we welcome back Olivia Ong. She's a pain and rehabilitation medicine physician in Australia, and her Kevin MD article is My Spinal Cord Injury Story from Physician to Patient and How I Rebuilt My Nervous System. Olivia, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me again, Kevin. Pleasure. So we last had you on a few years ago, and... And for those who didn't get a chance to listen to that article, your most recent one recaps your story. So let's jump straight into this Kevin MD article, my spinal cord injury story from physician to patient and how I rebuilt my nervous system. So for those who didn't get a chance to read it, tell us what this article is about and tell us your story. Yes. So basically this article that, you know, I've come up with for Kev- for you, Kevin MD, was I guess at the moment I'm kind of writing my memoir on my you know my spinal cord injury experience and this kind of you know came again and I got inspired again by like what is the real story behind this is it just a motivational inspirational story or is it more than that so I started tapping into my I guess my identity of myself as a physician and you know it you know I just had a really deep thought about it and in those lo- those couple of years that I did my intensive rehab at Project Walk Spinal Cord Injury Recovery Center in Carlsbad, California, I spent three years there, actually. Wonderful experience. Wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, it's Southern California. Wouldn't change it. <laughs> but I-, I thought to myself, what did I exactly go through in the- those three years other than, you know, the wonderful connections I've made with friendships there? Was the actual... You know, I'm, I've been really deeply interested in the nervous system health. I'm a strong proponent. I'm a strong advocate for burnout, as you know, in doctors. And it all comes down. It all to me, all roads lead to nervous system health. Mm. You know, obviously, I have a you know my spine. My, I have a spinal cord injury, so my nervous system is pretty dysfunctional. But that's okay. <laughs> you know, I I you know it is what it is. And now I walk with sticks and all that. And then burnout again, it's a stress nervous system. And then we know we talked about in 2021 about burnout in frontline healthcare workers. That's also from a stress nervous system burnout. So all roads again, lead to nervous system health. But obviously in this interview with you today, I'm focusing a lot more on how I rebuilt a nervous system from a spinal cord injury, because I think, you know, just using my own experience with you know, what I went through when I had my spinal cord injury, despite the fact that, you know, I'm a physician, I well and truly know with spinal cord injuries, what the outcome is, it's not pretty outcome. But the fact that when the doctors told me that I'll never walk again, and I'll never practice medicine, that really hit me really hard. Yeah, actually, it it was kind of shattering, because I remember sinking into this depressive state, I guess, and just losing my identity, just being a patient and with a, now with a spinal cord injury and everything. And I, I had this belief that I had a broken nervous system and I can't fix it. Mm-hmm. But when I went to Project Walk in, in Carlsbad, intensive rehab include, included not only just balance exercises, you know, learning to walk, stand like an infant, basically, mm-hmm. learning to walk again and, you know, taking first few steps and all that. It was quite fascinating because I start, started being interested in it. I'm like, oh, wow, every day there's always something new happening. There's more movement in my, you know, my legs. Yeah. I'm standing for longer periods. I can walk for longer. Yeah, I think what I learned was, I think the nervous system does change itself. You know how we there's this book by Norman Doy, like the brain changes itself. Okay. I think the nervous system does change itself, really. And yeah, I was just fascinated by the whole thing about my, I became my own textbook. So I just started, you know, yeah. just starting like, oh, this is fantastic. Like After three years, I did walk again. And I think there is opportunity here that, you know, like that the nervous system, nervous system can heal itself in, in its own way. So that's how it got me, you know, starting inspired to write the article for for you. And yeah, that's all, this is all how it started just from my, you know, my journey of, with that spinal cord injury I had. Yeah. Sure. So, for those who don't know your story, just tell yeah. us about your injury. Just briefly recap that story. Absolutely, yeah. So my injury happened in 2008 when I was a resident doctor. I just started my physiatry training, which is quite ironical because that's rehabilitation medicine. So I just, I think it was my first year in that training. I just 
finished up my spinal cord injury rotation. Uh, I, little did I realize that as I was walking to work, as a pedestrian, a car at high speed struck me. And obviously that was unexpected. And the next thing I knew, I was on the ground, paralyzed from the waist down. And obviously not only physically in spinal shock, but mentally, emotionally, I was in shock. Like, didn't expect to be. To, to have this as I was just walking to work, doing my daily thing, you know, like walking to work. And that that whole event just changed my life because um, I spent months in a rehab hospital going through grief and loss. In fact, the five stages of grief, as we know, anger, depression, acceptance, bargaining with God. Like if, if I get better, I'm just going to like save the world or whatever, you know, I've done it all and all that and acceptance. So I go through that kind of emotional upheaval every day, up and down, up and down like that. And a year after my injury, I made a decision to go to Project Walk in Carlsbad, as I've spoken about, because I had nothing to lose. I'm like exercising five hours a day. For, there's nothing to lose, right? I, I, I've become fitter if nothing happens from, from the spinal cord injury in terms of recovery, I, I just become fitter individual. Mm -hmm. So I did that, made the decision, Has my husband and I packed up our bags, moved from Australia to Carlsbad for three years, and that's what we did. And every day was like a boot camp, Monday to Friday, I will rock up in the gym and, you know, doing my workouts and the intensive rehab while my husband, you know, like watches and interacts with other, you know, the other carers as well in the center because there were just, no, it wasn't just me there was other spinal cord injury mm -hmm. survivors from all over the world obviously north america was the majority of them sure. but there were some canadians some aussies like me some you know brazilians and japanese and, and all that and uh, yeah that's that kind of you know the, the three years there was very fruitful not from a just a physical perspective emotional and mental healing, I guess, internally from the injury. And mm -hmm. I came back to Australia in around end of 2012, resuming my medical career, you know, sitting for the board exams, became qualified as a dual trained pain and rehab physician. And I had two kids after that. My two kids are now nine and three-ish, which is about to be four. And it's been a wonderful life. You know, now I do a lot of coaching, you know, speaking and writing. So it's been, uh, you know, a, a, a beautiful career that's, you know, it, it didn't start out that way. I, I don't think I could have imagined that I'll be living this life right now, mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago, lying in the hospital bed. So you never know what the, you know, what's in store for you, isn't it? In tragedies and challenges. So you mentioned this injury was back in 2008. And yes. one of the things that caught my ear was that you struggled with your identity as mm. you rehabilitated from that traumatic event. So talk more about that struggle and some of the choices and decision points that you had to encounter. I think interestingly, you know, that my life before injury is like there's this point before injury and after injury. Mm -hmm. And before my injury, you know, as as doctors, we all know what it's like, you know, yeah. you know, going, you know, walk, working in the wards, going from ward to, you know, seeing patient after patient, doing the charts. Well, I was a resident doctor, so I had more charts to do because yeah. I was the bottom of the hierarchy <laughs> in a way. But the thing is, as a patient in the hospital, it was quite interesting because I thought I'll be less scared as a doctor because I thought, oh, I knew the healthcare yeah. system and all that. In fact, it actually, I was, I was really, really scared. So yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine what it was like for my patients like to be in the hospital because I was, maybe because we know a lot more and we start freaking out over worst case scenarios. I don't know. But um, I started, you know, have, you know, when you have a lot of time to yourself, as in you being a hospital patient, you have a lot of time yeah. to your thoughts. And I guess, you know, and just thinking about the past and the future and now and all that. Yeah, you start being really anxious and scared. So my identity, in a way, you know, I always assumed... I, I had this identity as a very strong independent doctor mm -hmm. before the accident. Okay. And then when I was a patient, I'm like, I'm a spinal cord injury, per, you know, injured person now. I'm disabled. I may not have a medical career. My husband might leave me 
you know, <laughs> because I'm just such a burden to him. I may not even have kids. Like, what do I do with this life? I'll be lonely and I'll die alone. And, you know, all those thoughts. So the identity shifter became a more victimized mindset in a way. Mm. Self-pity. Um, I wasn't my own best friend, basically. I was really my own worst enemy. So I guess my identity shifted within the instant where the accident happened. Identity shifted. Uh, but I slowly got my identity back as I, you know, spent those three years in America. But I think it wasn't just the physical rehabilitation that restored me. It was all the other stuff, like the emotional connection, the the mental improvements, I guess, in my psychological state, perhaps, that kind of slowly I found myself back mm. because I started hearing myself the good voice, like my inner voice that says, hey, you got this, you know, that kind of, you know, the coach in me, or I guess the 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 best friend in me that I've always had, but I've kind of ignored. You kind of ignore that voice as a doctor. It's always yeah. the, you know, the, the harshest critic voice in your head. But yeah, so yeah, that's how my identity has shifted. Slowly now I'm back in a different way, different kind of identity. It'll be, it's more a physician, entrepreneur, identity perhaps or thought leader kind of identity but it's still me you know like despite all this new identities it's, it's still Olivia you know it's nothing's really changed now did you have to navigate these choices by yourself did you go through your own therapy and coaching mm. in terms of navigating all those voices tell us about who helped you mm. Eddie. I think in the early years when I was spending those three years in intensive rehab and project work I didn't have any access to coaches. I, I didn't know about coaching at that time, really. Yeah. This is way back in 2010. But I, what I did was every day, I I didn't realize that I was doing what I call, what we call in the personal development world now, visualization. Because okay. every day I'll come back home and just visualize that I'll be walking. So I did that for three years whilst I was, I was in Project World. Like one day I'll be walking and doing this and doing that. So that helped the visualization. I think athletes do that a lot of that. Yeah, Performers yeah. do a lot of that, like singers and all that. And the other thing I did was coaching myself through my own mindset. Sure. So what I started doing was every I, I started celebrating every win, whether it's my big toe moving that day or I started taking more steps that day. I just celebrated every single win. Those are kind of the two mindset tools I kind of did on myself without knowing that they, they were actually mindset tools yeah. because I had to self-coach myself through walking because no one else is going to help me through that. This was in 2010 at that time. But, you know, like the spinal cord injury was a, was a, you know, spiritual experience, I guess. And then the he healing and all that. But then as you go back, to, you know, as I went back to the, you know, rat race, hamster wheel, as they call it, medical life, mm -hmm. you kind of forget all that. You start being, it's so easy because all you know you're surrounded by that kind of environment where everyone is their own worst critic yeah. the you know and then the, you have all this workload kind of like how you say dumped on you and you had to and you you know we you know working in a broken healthcare system <laughs> um it, it's just yeah it kind of destroyed me and look and then before i knew it in 2019 i had burnout and at that time, I didn't know about burnout. I, I heard about burnout, but I didn't know what it was all about. Yeah. You know, as as a doctor, you know what I did? I just did all the, read all the articles, read all the books, didn't help. But until I received coaching, that was when it really, really changed my life in terms of recovering from burnout in 20, way back in 2019. Because I started becoming aware of my own, you know, like belief systems. Mm -hmm. Like, it turns out that I had this, shame about being a spinal cord injured doctor that I was carrying with me. So I was doing all the things, probably burning myself out in the yeah. in the process to prove to my colleagues not only that I could still perform my usual work role, that I still I still got it. You know, yeah. I didn't like, you know, did regress in create in, in fact I had to I had to prove to them that I still got it. I did what I did, passed the exams. Yeah, so that burnt me out. I think the coaching really helped hmm. me a lot. And that was the main reason why I got certified as a coach initially just to coach myself because I just thought, hey, it'll be good to coach yourself, right? Yeah. Through yeah. 
medical challenges and career problems. And then, and then, you know, during the pandemic, when we did the interview in way back in 2021, I started getting all these requests from my medical peers going, hey, can you coach me? I know you've become a coach now. Can you coach me through burnout? And, you know, because, the, you know, because of this COVID thing and I'm burnt out and, and all that. So I started coaching my peers. And then, in, you know, a couple of months after that, I set up my, my coaching business. And that's how it kind of still still that way I'm still coaching doctors through burnout in my business so I'm really very it makes me fulfilled and happy because I get to help so many doctors out there so that's that's how it all evolved sure. really yeah so how did your story of spinal trauma how does that affect yeah. your coaching with physicians and your interactions with patients how did your story your past and your recovery how did that influence you professionally today mm. I think what it really helped me with the spinal cord injury trauma experience was just knowing how to listen to my body more. I had to, Kevin, like I had, I just had to because when I was learning to walk again, all that, I have to be mindful. I have to make sure that I, I walk properly so I don't lose my balance and then hit my head, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I have to be like every little win I have to celebrate, as I said, because yeah, I just had to listen to my body more than my head. Sure. That, that's what my experience taught me. Not only that, it's just this compassion towards yourself, being kind, being your own best friend. Unfortunately, we, we don't do that very well in medicine, I'm afraid, because it's not the environment we work in. But despite what's, whatever's going on out there in medicine and in the world, you can control your internal environment. Just And, you know, with the nervous system topic again, you know, one of the other tools I learned from burnout, my burnout experience through coaching was reg also regulating my nervous system. That was a big key. And I just remember when I was first, you know, like burnt out, I, I knew that I had to do learn meditation. So I got the help of a meditation teacher and he was quite shocked that I couldn't even breathe properly. Mm, sure. That's how ramped up or dysfunctional <laughs> my sympathetic nervous system was it was so up you know it was like over amplified or something and we spent months just to learn to breathe properly again so that's how i started you know i didn't start out sitting in a zen cushion closing my eyes i didn't start out that way although i love to but i didn't start out that way and that's how it started so i started learning all these things i i you know implemented for myself and I started helping my coaching clients and my patients too. Because with chronic pain, it's also from a stressed nervous system. And a lot of these patients with chronic pain have been through trauma. So it's doubly stressed nervous system. So whatever techniques I teach my coaching clients, I teach my patients. Because these are the tools I had to learn for myself. Yeah. We're talking to Olivia Ong. She's a pain and rehabilitation medicine physician in Australia. Her Kevin MD article is My Spinal Cord Injury Story from Physician to Patient and How I Rebuilt My Nervous System. Olivia, as always, will end with some of your take-home messages to the Kevin MD audience. Yeah, I think my take-home message for your audience, Kevin, will be, you know, I just want all of you to just live your love, just every day live what you're passionate for and shine your light, whether it's at work, at home as a parent, or as you know, as a coach for your mm -hmm. kids' soccer team, or what what would you call you guys call it football team, or you know, just volunteering at church or anything like that, and just to be your own best friend. That's my key message: just to be your own best friend because you've got your own back. You know, Olivia, thank you so much for sharing your story, time, and insight, and thanks again for coming back on the show. Yeah, no problem, Kevin. Thank you. Mm -hmm.